Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another um, heartbeat quickening episode of iHeartGeek. That's just because of all the stimulants. Yes, yeah, we're man. We're talking about one of my favorite things in the world. Hold on. Mm. Caffeinated beverages. This includes coffee. This includes tea. This, this includes the glorious invention, greatest invention of the modern century, Red Bull. Um, oh. <laughs> Whoa. It, it only tastes a little bit like gasoline. <clears throat> that's that's. It's very nasty. No offense, Red Bull lovers. I think that you get used to it. It's an acquired taste, kind of like a beer. <laughs> a little bit. It, de- it depends on that. what you choose, though. The original Red Bull? No, that's battery acid. Oh yeah, it's got it that even weird, looks like battery acid. It's uh, a, and it's got that weird like um battery or that um ca- cotton candy taste over the gasoline. That's really a weird yeah. <laughs> so yeah, listeners, in case you haven't figured out, we're gonna be talking about coffee and caffeine today. Yep. That's what I'm about today. The We've most prominent on a tangent. most socially acceptable <laughs> legal drug. Yes, it is. Let's not disguise it. That's what it is. So yep. can, can we ask this? Why is this one the one that we draw the line at as Americans and really all over the world? This is where we draw the line. This is the okay drug. Everything else is bad. This is okay. Why? Because it doesn't destroy you like some other drugs do. Does it yeah. though? I think, I think the consequences well, of it are, are minimal compared to the things that yeah. we don't accept. Uh, you know, it it's something that everybody from all walks of life uses without Mm -hmm. too many ill effects. Mm -hmm. I won't crash a car because I've had too many cups of coffee. I might, I might be really shaky. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't, I don't know. And you can't, I don't know. You probably could OD on coffee, but I don't think anybody's actually OD on coffee. It takes, uh, in one shot, it would take four gallons roughly. With all the recent stuff that we've seen, like people's hearts exploding and stuff, I mean, right. is enough enough? Oh, that's yeah, but that's that's more of an abuse of what it is. It's case by case, yeah. It's, yeah, you know, we got yeah. we got a lot of hospitalizations and stuff that have increased since the the dawn of energy, energy drink. drinks, um, yeah, because they unfortunately do market it towards the younger crowd who's not gonna maybe use such a mm-hmm. level head when deciding, hey. This is my fourth one today. Sure, why not? I got things to do. You know, I do too. I'm, I do too. I stop. I'm it gaming, <laughs> you know. Or, but um, then you also have things like because caffeine being in so many products and everything, it's not mm-hmm. FDA regulated at all. So mm-hmm. they figured, hey, let's start making caffeine powders and things like that. Yeah, that's scary stuff. That's when it got like it. It didn't mm-hmm. take long for people to realize that was a bad idea. Yeah, and I mean, it's one, and what's Tyler saying, like things like pre-workout, which has a caffeine jolt in it. Right. Like if you take pre-workout and then you go try to run, like full out run, you you could, ha- could have problems. a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could have a heart attack because you're already elevating your heart rate. But it's like, the thing is, is with caffeine, for the most part, you re- most people will regulate their usage the way mm-hmm. they probably should be. Yeah. Whereas with other, with well, other it's a slow drip that, when you're drinking yeah you know you, yeah. so you, as, the, as we're all slowly drinking our caffeinated on. beverages the effects are coming like, on as yeah, you're drinking it so you know oh wow okay okay i need to stop you know but when you mm-hmm. like people started dry scooping pre-workouts or oh, they started selling no. monsters in giant cans you know and you mm-hmm. slam that and chug it or whatever you don't you're not getting that slow drip from just sipping mm-hmm. on it Coffee yeah, mm-hmm. so it just mm-hmm. nails you. That's a problem. Which I think mm-hmm. that's part of the, I guess, the allure of coffee because it is that, that very ritualistic, th- and tea as well. I'll give. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll uh-huh. put coffee mm-hmm. tea the same thing. It's got a very, mm-hmm. it's a very, it's a ritual that you have to do mm-hmm. in order Absolutely. to have it. Like I watched, um, mm-hmm. and I, I want to just jump right up. Tyler puts on on our. We have a group Marco that we talk constantly, but he shows us his little coffee ritual, and it's like. This is fascinating, and there's just something mm-hmm. that's just hypnotic about it. Tell tell me about your coffee ritual, real quick, there, Tyler. Uh, well, me, uh, I go. I it used to be a real complicated 
deal. I had to have to buy the right <laughs> thing. Now it's just I want a Chemex pour over coffee. I want a filter. I grind my coffee. That's it. You know, this is the it's, job. It's, yeah, it's grind, pour, enjoy. You know, it's just uh, you keep it simple, but it, it's a longer process, and that kind of you know it makes it to where I have my my five minutes of zen every morning. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't have a K cup that just spits it out and I can chug it right away. It takes some time. You know, I can do other things while, while the thing's dripping. Do. But yeah, it, yeah. I just set up my thing. I grind my beans, pour it in the filter, just sit there, do my pour. I'm thinking about things for the day while I'm pouring my coffee and just getting it all, all saturated there. And, you know, my coffee's ready to go when I'm ready to go out the door. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just, I prefer it in a quiet house. Yeah. So it's got to be done early in the morning around here. But yeah, yeah you know, it's just a way to get ready for the day. Now, I have three different rituals. I have my, <laughs> let me hit this one real quick. My, my first ritual is my, my, my Red Bull, because I got to run out the door. Those aren't, that's not a ritual. And it's just, I got to wake up quick because I work all that's, sorts of weird That's hours. you getting your fix. That's me getting my fix. Yeah. Now, even my K-Cup, mm-hmm. I have, I see the dogs. I put it on. I might turn on the TV. I might not. Just kind of relax for a few minutes. Get that smell in me. And that's just, oh, that's really nice. And it's, it is a calming thing before the storm. And then my final one is my tea. And I don't drink tea in the morning because I don't feel like it gives me enough of a buzz. But I love sitting there with with the just, and it's got to be with the, um, you can get the loose leaf. And I got a little submarine that I put my loose leaf in. But I just steeping it in the hot water. I don't like. Yeah, that to me, it is just really that's almost to come down on the day. It's it, weird how the rituals work. Do you have a ritual, Courtney? When it comes to coffee, not really. Um, because and I love coffee, but I I have the cake cup, so I put the cake cup in and mm-hmm. I brew me a cup of coffee, and that's what I do in the morning. Um, and occasionally I will go to no, I'm not giving free advertising, but I will go to the two one of the two popular coffee places big chains and i'll go get and i have specific things that i order but when it comes to tea i'm i'm very much a tea snob and so depending on what kind of tea i'm drinking yeah and when i'm drinking it then there's a there's an entire ritual involved in that so like with with tyler with his pour over thing like i have an electric kettle um, I also have one that you put on the stove. You do not microwave your tea because oh, you do no. the devil. No. Um, yeah. No, you do not put your tea in the microwave. I know some people do, but just don't do it. Um, but yeah, and and like when in terms of tea, tea snob, I literally have a whole shelf of my pantry is various types of teas. You know, black teas white teas, pea berry, whatever it is. And there's, there's a specific steeping time and ritual that goes into every single, and I have like a specific, I usually, when I'm drinking my tea, I have specific mugs that I use, mm-hmm. you know, and I, depending on what it is, what do I add into it and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's tea is more of my ritualistic thing. Coffee, slap the cake up in there and. You're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> I know, I, I would, know. You know, I would love to have that kind of time. trying to educate me to be more of a coffee person. <laughs> I'm, she's the tea snob on the coffee snob. I find it mm-hmm. interesting, though, that you say, you know, at the end of the day is when you like to have your tea dub. Mm-hmm. Um, that's commonplace, not, you know, unheard of. Um, I guess, you know, a lot of people would be like, ah, oh, it just relaxes me and stuff. But honestly, nobody knows why. And I thought that was interesting when I figured that out a while back that, you know, these, the one thing tea actually has up on coffee is that a lot of teas also um, contain theanine instead of just caffeine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the theanine, when paired Mm -hmm. with caffeine, actually gives it all the positives of the caffeine are kind of, you know, enhanced. And you get this, that, that mood boosting, almost relaxing kind of feeling, you know, comes from that combination. And, uh, you know, coffee, that's, that's where one, you know, there's the big, big arguments, you know, she likes tea. I like coffee, you know, coffee is more hard hitting, gets you going out the door in the morning mm-hmm. for tea. You get that combo and you get that relaxing kind of feel from it. And, 
you know, that's why you'll see a lot of tea drinkers mm-hmm. at night instead of coffee. Well, I definitely see. Well, like, and the thing is with. Go ahead. The, I, I was going to say the other thing with the other thing with tea is not all teas have caffeine. Um, right. So. But you, you might know, as well drink a non-alcoholic beer. To, <laughs> well, no, because because those variants, those non-caffeinated variants, um, there are other there are other benefits that go along with it. So, like chamomile has no caffeine in it, and it helps you sleep. Right. Peppermint has no caffeine in it, and it helps your tummy. So, I mean, there's all these. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. Mani- there's there's men. Medicinal or medicinal benefits to coffee, but there's a lot of medicinal benefits in varieties of tea, depending on what you're drinking, what you're drinking it for, and also, and I, I mean, there are there are cultural rituals involving coffee, but there's way more in tea because tea has actually been drunk longer than coffee has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm not I'm not crapping on coffee. And one. I got a giant is, uh, cup of it right interesting here. Interesting <laughs> about that too is the fact that you know you say the varieties of teas and everything, mm-hmm. and most people think tea is tea and chamomile. Oh, it just must be another version of it's actually a different plant. You know that's mm-hmm. why it doesn't have the caffeine. Mm-hmm. All the like all the all your tea white teas, teas yeah. green teas, oolongs, black teas, all those come from the same plant. But Cylons. then you get out there and you get all your chamomiles and you know these different pea herbs, berry, you know, and scrolls. Yeah. You know, so when you when people say tea, they can mean a million different things, and it, it's mm-hmm. you know when you talk about tea in the traditional sense, you're going to be talking about the one plant, but the uh, mm-hmm. the variations there are astounding. You know, just the way people make it and everything. Mm-hmm. So, and each flavor profile, you can have a black tea as the base, and then depending on where it's grown and what they put it put in it. Like Earl Grey is a very popular tea. Well, yeah. it's black tea, but it also has bergamot in it. Yeah. It gives it that orangey flavor. But it's, you know, so I mean, it's, there's all of that, that inside teas. Okay, since, since, since we're on this for a second, why it does it feel like, I mean, culturally, it's, you know, Americans drink coffee, the British drink tea. Um Culturally, where did that split happen? Why did it happen? I mean, we all came from the same place, America. Generally, you'd figure a lot of that culture would transfer over. Why does anybody know how that split happened? I don't know how the split war. happened. Yeah, I mean, it could be that could be why. I mean, honestly, the they wanted to is, go away from the go, colony over there. The, mm-hmm. the, the king, the, everybody's drinking tea. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. carried it. They brought it over here for a while, mm-hmm. but after, Boston after tea so party, long, yeah. it became like, no, mm-hmm. we don't want to associate with that anymore. Stop drinking mm-hmm. the tea. We have this coffee. Try this, you know, over over you know, a long period of time. America just associated with coffee more instead. A couple of interesting things about that is actually Britain and the United Kingdom has become more of a coffee coffee culture. Yeah. Really? Um, they do. They still drink their tea and they do have their high tea and all that good stuff. But they are more of a coffee, coffee culture now than they, than, you know, there's the preconception that they're tea, they're all tea drinking stops. But no, I mean, yes, they do drink tea, but it, they're, they're a lot like us. They drink a lot of coffee too. Um, there is multiple coffee shops in London on like every corner. You can't like throw a rock without hitting four or five different types of coffee shops in London. Um, But the other thing is you have to remember that the British didn't start out drinking tea. Mm -hmm. They got it from China Mm -hmm. when they, when they were doing their, when the British empire was out doing their colonization stuff, tea was one of the things that they, they brought home with them. And that's how it happened. And I mean, I think, we as Americans started drinking tea because I don't think there was much coffee. Maybe Tyler knows a little bit more about it than I do. Um, because coffee, it's not while it's grown all over the world now, it didn't used to be. You know, it's like tobacco wasn't grown all over the, the world before. So I think maybe coffee was also easier for us to get a hold of during okay. the Revolutionary War time. Yeah, eventually. So 
because I think if I correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler, because I don't know for sure. And if you don't know, listeners tell me, I believe coffee originates from South America. The coffee plant originates from South America. Ethiopia. Did it come from Ethiopia or did it really? go to Ethiopia? It's tra- you can I trace it back. Is good. You can trace it back to Ethiopia as its origin. There's a lot of legends okay. on how it was discovered. You know, the goat herder and his goats were eating the coffee berries and this and that. And he tried it. And oh, um, there's a lot of le- legends saying that it actually started in Yemen. But when you really read into that, it was brought from Ethiopia to Yemen. So you can trace a lot of it back to Ethiopia being the, the birthplace of, you know, discovering the coffee plant. Um, That's rad. You know, I I I favor Ethiopian overall, so maybe that's why they're just so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coffee. Okay, well, since since we hit this a, a minute ago, I'd like, I'd like to go back to this one just for a second. Um, the rise and fall of the coffee shop. Let's be honest. There's been. I don't a know if we of- would want to say the word fall because uh, they're still going yeah. strong. I well, you compare it to the '90s, the coffee shops are not what they were. But you can go back in the fifties with the, with the beatniks. They had coffee shops then too, and they kind of died out a bit. I think that by fall, I think that it all corporatized into um, all the small chains got eaten up, and everything is um, moon money like that. I just yeah, I don't want to advertise them. Um, but the big corporate coffee place that we're all thinking of right now, I think that they've actually helped destroy the the culture that we've had of coffee shops and i think it was god i miss those amazing coffee shops where people would just hang out for hours and people were pretentious and you know you read bad poetry or whatever oh yeah see i i i respectfully disagree with that because i know at least 15 of those very kind of coffee shops in town you could go to at any given time and most of them are 24 hours really you just you just have to know that they're there you know, yeah. that's what it is. I see them around quite a bit too. I, I, I don't, I think it was like, it was kind of a double edged sword when the big corporate monster started putting one on every corner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, it, mm-hmm. it put coffee and coffee shops even more so into the, the social limelight and everything. But and the special all the little light. shops started uh, even multiplying more. I think we, you know, I see them everywhere. But mm-hmm. I think also a lot of people started modeling their business after how they have their business set up mm-hmm. and how they do things in their shop shop mm-hmm. and it's not that counterculture you know kind of vibe anymore when you go into even an independent coffee shop mm-hmm. and one thing i will give you deb i will say this because we're all we're all tiptoeing around the name of the one that we all know um and this is not to disparage anybody that likes their coffee i drink Burnt, their coffee yeah. That they're burnt beans. Um, but the other thing is, is in terms of that, sometimes the product is not as good as say, as it should be, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I mean, because it's it's a mass produced cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Now, this is coming from somebody that drinks K cups. <laughs> so. that, that's fair. That is completely fair. Um, but if I want to go to and a I drink place, their coffee, but if I want to go to a place, I want to go to some place that. I feel like it's special and I can taste the beans and all that. If I'm going to that place, it's like, okay, I'm going to have something and it's going to be completely covered by um, whatever fillers that I put into it. I'm going to have the milk in it and I'm going to have the, uh, the chocolate or whatever. And so I can't taste the coffee because you don't want to taste it. Yeah. If I want to go to a place, I want to go to a place that cares a lot about the coffee, and you, yeah. you know, and they educate you. And that's, I think that's the big difference. If I want a quick cup of coffee on the go, like if I'm driving into the office or something, I'll stop at that place that we yeah. do not mention and I'll get that mass produced quick cup of coffee. I don't know, man. If I, I want something oh, Dutch brother. Fancy fancy <laughs> pantsy. Yeah. Oh, I got you into I, that one, didn't I? Yeah, when I was visiting I you guys, it took me there. I hadn't seen one of them. That, they, there's nothing I good. can drink at Dutch <laughs> Brothers. Yeah, I know. Oh, it, it's sugar. Too drink. much sugar. Because yeah, it's that's, too much that's sugar the thing. Drinks. A lot of people go to Starbucks. What do they get? The half calf mocha latte, frappuccino, unicorn. The thing. white chocolate mocha with you know, sprinkles. Yes. You're not drinking coffee. <laughs> I drink You're drinking a coffee milk, with coffee a flavored milkshake. You know, every day. 
I, I'd go now, for like if you have a delicious cup of black coffee, all right, you won me over. But if I want a sweet treat and stuff too, there's a craft to that, and uh, they brought a lot of popularity to that craft. Uh, people mm-hmm. go to yeah go aspire to go to school to learn how to make these wild ass drinks, and you know you get places like Dutch Brothers or the the other place. I don't know, you know why we we we've uh, completely self censored ourselves on that, but I just we, don't, do, we just I feel dirty mentioning. I feel it. dirty saying yeah. it when I'm talking about good coffee, and then that place. Hey, I will <laughs> yeah, not. You know. I will not lie. I I give them my money mm-hmm. probably yeah. at least once or twice a week. I, I don't fully go that often, but I go that there. I do. Well, I usually do it when I go into the office because I'll get a giant cup of coffee. And I mean, the thing is, is I don't drink black coffee because I can't stomach it. So I put a little bit of something in mine. Sometimes it's a little bit of cream. Sometimes a little half and half. Sometimes it's protein shake. Sometimes it's (laughs) booze. I mean, you never know. Um, But yeah, so I, I, I... frequent them but there are places in town that if i would like a really well crafted just beautiful cup of coffee that's not the place i'm gonna go if i need a quick jolt and i need something to keep me awake at the office that doesn't taste like i made it at the office Mm -hmm. true then yeah that's what i'm gonna do because we have terrible coffee at the office i think (laughs) i think where it all started going downhill and just going back to what I feel is the fall of the coffee, the the, the coffee shops, um, is when that place started to put in the drive throughs It took all the specialness of going into a place and being around the people because that is the that that's the that's the caffeine experience. You're around other people when you're driving I through. Was, it's like who cares? I wonder if the other thing. I wonder if the other thing is is and and and. Even before the drive throughs were in, went in, like you wouldn't go into one of those places. I'm just going to say the damn name. We, you, you don't go into a <laughs> Starbucks. I'm just going to say the damn name. Um, we, you don't go into a Starbucks to, I mean, some people will write there, but like oh, you don't geez. go into Starbucks to um, write. You don't, you don't go into a Starbucks to sit and sip your coffee and read a book. Um, you don't go in there to listen to poetry slams. You don't go in there to listen to live music. That's not that kind of coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And the ones that you're talking about, Dub, that's that's what you use them for. You know, I mean, you yeah. go to socialize. You go to listen to live music. You go to listen to poetry slams or open mic nights or, you know, I mean, you go in... You, you know, you go in and you write. I mean, and I know people still go into the Starbucks and write, but I mean, at this point in time, it's like, I feel like people go into Starbucks to write and I'm guilty of this too. Um, we'll go into Starbucks to write and they're like, Hey, look at me. I'm a writer. It's like that scene yeah. in family guy going, how can I be a screenwriter? If somebody's not seeing me screenwriting and on, my, go, on my, on my MacBook, Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of that. I think it, the and like the big chain there's two big chains in in the united kingdom one is called costas and one is called preta preta power they're the same kind of model as as say a starbucks is you wouldn't go in there to it's not a place to like really socialize and and i mean people do use the starbucks and whatnot for those but they don't it's not like the things like you were talking about where And I mean, there are there are ones in town that you can go into and do that kind of stuff, and you write, and you sit there and read a book and enjoy your cup of coffee. But Starbucks is not really ever. I don't think it's ever really been no catering to the coffee culture in that particular way. Well, I mean, yeah. it, I've been to the original again, one. not to crap on them. But. Yeah, I, I've been to the original one in uh, far in far um, not farmers market. Yeah, farmers market in uh, Seattle several times. You know, right, right by where they throw the fish and all that. And it Pike's looks place. like it was set up. Pike's place. Thank you. It looks like it was set up to do that. And yeah, I feel it like probably it, was. Yeah, the, the, the coffee shop. I mean, there's two fictionalized versions that I think I want in my coffee place, and that is the place of on Friends and um, the place on the movie. So I married an axe murderer. 
those that is the epitome of coffee shop to me and that is that's what i want back and i know times are changing blah blah i think when you mass produce something you end up losing a little bit of that and i think that's probably what the thing is for with yeah i mean like that's i think that's yeah yeah i think that's probably what the problem is with with Starbucks. And again, listeners, I drink Starbucks. I frequent them. I'm not crapping on them. I drink them at least once a month. On, I'm not going to hey, lie. Hey, I'm not if you, crapping you get offended by us talking bad about it. Starbucks, maybe you should drink better coffee. I don't know. <laughs> 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 they overroast everything to cover up the inferiority. Yeah. So, um, no, in my opinion. Now, let, let's mm-hmm. move a little bit onto other caffeinated beverages. And I want to talk mm-hmm. our favorite energy drinks. Now, Red Bulls, the, they're, they're the big dog, and they always will be. There's the stigma that comes with all these, though, with the really douchey, extreme sports feel with all this. I get it, but I, don't, I think it's kind of unfair. But I want to go back a little bit, and I want to talk my favorite energy drink of all time, which I don't, can't find anymore, which was Jolt. Jolt was an experiment all the sugar and twice the caffeine. And I remember thinking, Oh no, no, no. It was twice the sugar and twice the caffeine. Twice the caffeine. That was literally their yeah. selling point and you can still get it. Oh, it was delicious. I remember being a kid. We were in, I was in mm-hmm. junior high. We would drink that. And we thought we were just the coolest. Yeah. That was, that, that was, you know, that was legalized drugs for us. That was just like the most amazing thing. Mm-hmm. And then it just went out of fashion for like 15 or 20 years. And then Red Bull showed up, but Jolt was, I think Jolt, I don't know why it, I guess you can get it. Jolt still, was a cola. So that's a, yeah. It Jolt tasted is, so good. Jolt's a, you know what? Funny Jolt's about a that. cola. So it's, it's slightly different. Yeah. They, their caffeine, drink, their caffeine say. contents was like half of what Red Bull is too. Yeah. Even though it was double the caffeine. It's funny how far we've come. That's you know? really where we yeah. should have stopped, to be fair. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. you want something stronger, go get an espresso drink, you know? Well, but, yeah. <laughs> what what is it they say that, I don't know if it's true, but they say that you drink a Red Bull and it's the same caffeine as a gourmet coffee drink. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they that's how they advertise it. That doesn't seem right. I don't right. think so. I, I think know there's it's probably the, more. I don't know if it's the caffeine hits you harder or what. Because I definitely get, okay, I'm talking fast. I'm drinking my Red Bull right now. Maybe uh, it maybe it has to do with what Tyler was mentioning about how like a cup of coffee is kind of like a slow release of the caffeine. And with the Red Bull, well, it could have to do with the, much more active. Are you talking about Red Bull or Joel? Red Bull. Joel was a cold. Oh, Joel, so. Joel was just like, a, I think it was like drinking a Coke. There's there's other things. Yeah, it was a soda there, pop. Is what but it, it was, is. you're definitely feeling, Boo! With Red Bull, there's other things at play. You're not just drinking caffeine. You've got taurine in there, all these different little amino acids that act on the brain mm-hmm. as well. And they mm-hmm. probably couple with caffeine very well. So you're probably getting, mm-hmm. you know, all this uptake of, you know, pseudo energy from all these other elements in there too. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like with the energy drinks, I don't like the quote unquote culture around them. I drink them because I want to get the adrenaline junkie, fast. extreme yeah. athlete. Just, you know, yeah. Lots of, you know, five finger death punch and, you know, not, yeah. not, not that I'm dissing on what anybody likes, but I just. My mom likes that, five finger death punch. I like a couple of their songs, but just that whole kind of douchey thing around it. Could they change their culture? Could they change? Like, like coffee kind of changes the culture around. Have you or seen the CEO of makers of Bang? Like, no, that culture ain't changing. Anything. <laughs> he, he looks exactly like you would expect. <laughs> Do you guys like energy drinks? I don't drink them. Not on a regular basis, but I do. I, I know I you do used have my to drink a lot. Yeah. I know you used to drink a lot. I work in construction. You know, mm-hmm. the, yeah. That's, that was a thing. Yeah. Two a day. Easy. You know, two 16 ounces. It's, it, it was commonplace, but yeah. you know, not anymore. No, that there is something that's very different in the Red Bull stuff. And this is me griping about Red Bull. Um, I can't stop because otherwise I have the worst. I can drink coffee. I can drink other caffeine. Doesn't matter. I have the worst migraine. That's one thing about caffeine is its addictive qualities. But I think in terms of because like if you stop drinking coffee altogether, you'll get headaches for a while because your body is just used to it. You get legit withdrawal. 
Yeah, but I think because the caffeine content is so much higher and much more concentrated in energy drinks, I think it may make it borderline addictive because I know people Oh, that, it's definitely addictive. You can't stop. Yeah, addictive. they drink they even in Yeah, they now. can't. Yeah, I mean like when I wake up in the morning, I have to have a cup of coffee because I know if I don't, I'm going to be one tired, two probably get a headache. And so I fight it off of the pass and drink my 400 quarts of coffee throughout the day. But um yeah, I mean it's like I think maybe with with the energy drinks it's just it's so much more concentrated, I believe that it probably just affects you a whole lot differently than just say a cup of coffee would. But I could be yeah. wrong. I don't know the science. Well, Let's get Bill Nye on this. No, if, 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 anybody, science. if anybody knows this stuff, um answer it in the, in the comment section. I want to hear about it. Well, I know layman. I know the layman's level science on it, but hit us, baby. No, um, fire like away, in, dog. In terms of your your energy drinks and stuff, a lot of those have anywhere from like, I mean, you'll see on the label 130 milligrams caffeine up to 300 milligrams caffeine. Um, average cup of coffee has around like 80 to 100, so we'll call it 90 milligrams of caffeine. Um, espresso shots usually around 70, 60. Tea anywhere from like 10 to 60. So yeah. nothing, yeah. So, you know, for what we are used to, yeah. And um, it's funny because you say, you know, I know I'd be tired if I didn't have my coffee. And that's probably because you're used to having coffee. Mm. If, mm-hmm. if oh, you, I know. That's exactly If you why. went through the bad period and you broke away, you'd find your body actually does just fine waking up in the morning and creating its yeah. own energy and this and that. Um, oh, yeah. I know exactly but, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what caffeine does is it, it, it acts on the uh, adenosine receptors. Mm-hmm. So, you know, adenosine is the chemical in your brain that slowly throughout the day gets a larger and larger drip to tell you, okay, calm down. It's like the calm down signal. It makes you tired or sleepy or relaxed. You know, so by the end of the day, you've had enough buildup to where, you know, everything's like, okay, time to go to bed. You know, and your circadian rhythm, a lot of mechanisms that work there. Florida, but man, caffeine, teaches science. Caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors. So mm-hmm. when it blocks the, the adenosine from being uptake, from taking up, it's uh, basically turning off all that calm down signal. And so you end up, all these other mechanisms get to, get to do their thing. And it's not, caffeine doesn't create energy. It's just that it's subduing that, you know, calm signal that your brain's yeah. receiving. And you... For people who are constantly banging energy drinks or slamming you know, double shots all day long and stuff, you're in a constant, mm-hmm. it's putting your body in a constant fight or flight kind of, you know, mode. And, uh, that makes sense. You're, you're, that's why people who abuse it a lot end up with, um, what they, you know, they call high blood pressure, heart attacks, the adrenal, the adrenal syndrome. Um, basically, where your adrenal glands have been just, overworked because they're yeah. constantly in that fight or flight mm-hmm. and um it's the technical term i think is hph access syndrome well, it's the same it's same and with it's abuse uh, of any drug let's be fair on that one exactly yeah. yeah yeah and that's why i say 400 milligrams generally for a grown adult is probably top tier intake throughout the day for if until you want to start having issues with like you know sleep and just your circadian rhythm being messed up and all that and you can also give yourself um, ulcers if you have too much coffee it's I, i've seen it my mom used to be a heavy coffee drinker she ended up with bad ulcers you know it was a bad time mm-hmm. um because the acid will eat your stomach lining. yeah yeah it will because that's that's actually part of the the whole brewing process what you're doing when you're extracting things there's fats so there's acids and then sugars and then plant fiber but i th- so, I think again what we're saying here we're not saying don't drink coffee don't drink energy no, no drink it not it's at balance. all <laughs> it's all about balance yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, my cup yeah. of coffee or two, you know, on average, two cups of coffee a day is not bad for you. It actually, there's, you know, depending on which influencer you're listening to, there are benefits and there are negatives, you mm-hmm. know, on the body as far as from a health standpoint. And, you know, it's, it's being proven more and more that drinking at least a cup of coffee a day can be beneficial, you know, in a big mm-hmm. way, you know, for Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. even protecting, being protective of the liver, uh, you know, there's just all these different little health things that, you know, come down the line in positives, but the negatives, 
as we mentioned, you know, you start getting jittery and stuff and this and that, well, you, your nervous system being excited, you yeah. know, it, it's everything's firing because it's not getting that calm down signal, you know, so you, all you, you get dopamine hits and well, you know, yeah. stuff like that. If, if you want the up, you have to prepare for the down. Exactly. Absolutely. And it's, you, you have what, to, what does your body do when people say I have a tolerance to caffeine? Like Ryan, one of you know, he commented on the listener feedback that he can drink coffee at night. He likes it for a nightcap because it does nothing to him. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of reasons that, that may be. Either one, he's drinking a heck of a lot of caffeine all the time, and he's built up such a tolerance by your brain creating more uh, adenosine receptors, mm -hmm. so it's actually still receiving the adenosine on a regular. And or he's uh, just genetically, you know, gifted in that manner. <laughs> Well, some, some people are something I can speak to on that. Um, I know if you have minor a ADD, um, that can happen a lot. It's, it's sort of like the similar um, quote unquote normal people can take uh, Ritalin and, ah! but yeah. if you have somebody with ADD, it's just like, I don't feel anything. I just feel yeah. normal. There's and imbalances. That, it's, There's, it's, I think it's the same thing with ADD and caffeine. It can be. So what I'm not we're saying, Ryan, is you have a mental imbalance. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I can say I can speak to myself. I mean, I can be. I, right, I, right. I purposely overdid it on the caffeine this morning because, hey, it's for the show. But nor I, I pretty much feel normal with. And with caffeine, too. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, you get your hit, you do your thing. You might have another cup later on, this and that. Um, your body's so used to it when you take it all away. It's going to have it, yeah. your body's trying to regulate itself. You get these icky feelings and then you get headaches. And that's why you have believe the headaches that the headaches are the with, worst with caffeine. Normally, the blood vessels in the brain are so restricted and everything. And then when you take it all away, you know, the blood vessels really open up and flow like they should. And well, that, and that, in, that swelling creates in terms, pain, you know? in terms of that, too. Um, people who have migraines because I get them, we are actually, if I Supposed don't have any. Happy. If I don't have any Excedrin around me, what I used to have to do is I would have to, I could, if I could get my hands on a Coke, an ice cold Coke, I could mm -hmm. slam that and it would stave off the headache because what it does is it actually opens up the, the blood yeah. vessels and it helps stave off the headache. Um, and Excedrin, which is a popular migraine medication over the counter, it has caffeine in it mm -hmm. because yeah. that will help with migraines. So yeah. And, and from what I've seen, human body's weird, y'all. From what I was, I was uh, looking We're into, it's, it's, <laughs> a lot of doctors believe it's actually the opposite that where it's it, they're constantly restricted with caffeine, and so when they freely open up, and you're not used to that, you know, like when I go and do workouts after not doing for a long time, you're my sure. head's throbbing yeah. and stuff. I end up with a headache just because all the blood vessels, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, you know, especially being a big coffee drinker, you know, so it makes mm -hmm. sense they'd have caffeine in there. Okay, so let's jump on something we haven't done in a while. I miss doing these conversation podcasts, guys. I really do. Yeah. Um, let's. We're going to jump over, and we had a little listener feedback. And now, let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. Okay, so... I'm actually reading these. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to butcher every one of the comments. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Next time, I'm going to make sure. You'll be fine. Reads it Go one for way it. Or the other. Okay, he usually makes crying. me do it, listeners. I almost always exclusively make you do it. Okay. So I asked the question, what is your favorite coffee, beverage, or brand? Something along those lines. So let's see. I'll, I'll read some of these. I just did this yesterday. So um, we had pretty good... Um, feedback on it so uh our friend christina says archive it's a local coffee roaster that has the best beans and that's in portland uh so delicious and they do small batch roasting so the coffee is rich bold and divine as uh, am i oh <laughs> sorry i just had to do it i knew you did i had to it was open and i walked in like the kool-aid man somebody that shares uh tyler's last name we have kimberly she likes the nitro cold brew from Starbucks for cold coffee or fresh roasted, fresh ground, pour over coffee for hot coffee. I think we that's because her husband coffee. makes yeah. it for her yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody else is going to do it. Uh, let's see, Skeeter says nitro cold brew with vanilla sweet cream cold foam. 
I think at that point, you're not drinking coffee anymore. Just me. Do not coffee shame people. I don't. I'm, I'm just because it's skewed is the only one I reason I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, there's there. I'll read one more. Okay, so let's go with um, the voice of the show, Mr. TC Harvey himself. Uh, Blue Mountain Coffee from Jamaica, currently fifty six dollars per pound. Ouch! Yep. Uh, it's one of the most full Some of bodied, the best. yeah, tasty wondermus coffees he's ever had. Uh, thank you guys so much for your feedback. That helps us out. Yeah. I, it, it makes the show better and i like hearing blue from mountain you. blue mountain is correct me if i'm wrong tell you, but it's one of the best coffees out there it's, yeah it can be okay yeah. we're, let's we're gonna hit on this in just a second let's jump on over to the main event now it's time for the main event Okay, so for our main event, we're not doing a top five today just because we're not doing a top five. We're just kind of going to kind of talk about Mm-mm. our version of what we asked in the listener feedback. What's our favorite coffee brand or drinks or whatever, what have you. So don't expect your, our normal top five. I want to hit first. This is something you two constantly talk about. And this is your Hawaiian coffee. We don't shut up about it. Ever. No, I mean, at least once a week we hear about this coffee, whether you have it yeah. or not. Tell us about this just transcendent experience of coffee that you guys are always going on and on and on and on. And on Kona? Or Kona coffee? That's the one. Okay, listeners. The reason I talk about this is because my family lives in Hawaii. <laughs> we live on the Big Island part of the time. My fa- my family lives there. Um, and you can get Kona coffee from the source. You just go up. You can get it at the grocery store because all of the local coffee brands are sold mm-hmm. in like the drug stores. Or, or you can drive up the island and go to a farm and you can get coffee straight from the coffee farm. And that's what I do. And I mean, like, there's there's brands that that I drink when I am in Kona, when I'm home in Kona that I can't get on the mainland because Mm -hmm. they just don't travel. well. You just can't get them here. Um, and so I always get some from my favorite, my favorite farms when I'm in Hawaii visiting my family and I just, you know, load up my carry on and then I come home (laughs) and I drink. So yeah, like I like mountain thunder, which is very good. So, so tell, um, tell us, and tell us what Hollywood. is the flavor? What is the kind of the flavor profile on these? It's because bubbles? it's it's very it's balanced. how it's grown. Yeah, Tyler can probably explain it better. But yeah. it's it, the climate in what's called the cloud forest area. Now, every island has has farms. So there's there's coffee that's grown on Kauai. There's coffee that's grown on Maui. Um, but the stuff that's really grown good. on, yeah, they're all really good. The stuff that's grown on Hawaii, there's an area on the island of Hawaii that's referred to as the cloud forest. And it just has the perfect climate elevation and the volcanic soil just is yeah. really good for, for growing coffee. Mm-hmm. That they just they discovered it's really good for growing coffee, and that's why Kona coffee. There's blends, and then there's actual pure Kona coffee. That's why Kona, pure Kona coffee is considered some of the best in Absolutely. the world. But Tyler can ex- probably explain yeah, the, it's, the science of it more. Than uh, I Kona's can. great. If you get 100 percent Kona, you're going to pay an arm and a leg, but it's it's good. At yeah, least over, over here, they got to ship it over here. But yeah, it's even it's expensive on island too there's, because there's just uh that's the thing with coffee. It, there's a so many variables that go into a quality bean. Mm-hmm. And you know, that with something on Hawaii or Kona or pick an island, I'm just saying Hawaii and generalizing the chain. Oh sorry. Wow. Yeah. Um you know, with, with that, it, there tend to be smaller operations. So they're handpicking the choice berries off the trees and 
Mm-hmm. Their, their, their process of uh, washing and drying is, is going to be a little bit different. It's not these big mass produced things where they have a machine mm-hmm. go through and just scoop up all the berries off the leaves. And, and even the ones that are bigger yeah. and do have that kind of stuff, it's still yeah. a smaller operation. Because yeah, they'll still the have size three people in a, yeah. in a thing, you know, going through and picking out. You know, yeah. All the un- yeah, you might go into the roasting and- room and there's one person running the roaster. Right. And their climate there, you know, with, with cooler nights and warm days and high humidity, and then you got the soil, you know, their, their beans end up, the, the trees end up producing more sugar in the cherries and stuff like that. And it, it all, it all comes into play. And that's why, you know, Jamaican Blue Mountain, as Todd mentioned in the listener feedback, you know, that's another place. It's mountainous, but it's very, it's out in the middle of the water. It's very humid. The soil's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're at a good altitude. You know, all these things factor in and it's, you get, you, then you got smaller operations where, you know, again, they're going to take more care into picking up, picking the choice stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, th- that, that all matters. They're lower level altitudes. So they're going to be more mm-hmm. on like what you're, what you'd find in Colombia's and, or like, you know, you're a more bitter, chocolatey, nutty, earthy kind of flavors, you know, because higher altitude tends to produce, you know, your five, 6,000 feet. Like Ethiopians and stuff are more fruity and floral, you know, at a higher altitude, mm-hmm. uh, more acidic, you know. So you get that with Kona, you get that low acidic coffee with all just the mm-hmm. sweetness to it, especially if you roast it at like a medium or maybe just under a medium, you know, it's, it's high quality stuff. So I, mm-hmm. I got to ask this question. I mean, you, yes, you've explained why it's good, but tell me about the difference in the taste. I, well, I'm, I'm not a coffee snob per se. I'm a little bit, but I'm not. Um, I mean, how, tell me how it tastes. Why do, why it's, is this flavor better? Not, not the way it was grown. Tell me about the flavor. That's what I want to know it's about. It's smoother. It tends to be smoother because of all those variables. Like Tyler was saying, like yeah. it's less acidic because the volcanic soil mm. tends to tends it to make the acid come out of it a little bit. And it's also the cloud forest is, is so named because there is, there's fog at any given time and it's not volcanic fog. It's like actual fog because it's, it's up, up Island. So it's at a higher elevation. It's cooler. It rains more on that part. The cloud forest is actually right on the edge of the rainforest climate zone on the island of Hawaii. Um, and so there's all those different, the different variables. So it tends to be a smoother, richer, more balanced flavor. And in depending on, depending on what farm, it's sometimes food, it's, right. there's, yeah, there's also a, there's a nuttier, there tends to be a nuttier flavor with cone and coffee, I think. And I mean, and that's even before they, you- they'll roast it and mix it with some some of you the farms can't just put throw it a in a k-cup program. like if you'll you probably won't find too much 100 percent kona thrown into a k-cup or you know somebody Except putting it in to just a uh, an old you know 20 dollar walmart you know drip coffee maker yeah you know kona if you're buying kona when you're spending the money you're going to make it right most likely so if you brew it right yeah is those yeah brewing techniques and the temperature and all that, it all factors into the flavor you get out. Yeah. I will usually when it's put done right, mine that... in my Italian coffee pot, yeah. which for everybody who doesn't know, it's the, you've probably the seen them in French use together. them too. Yeah. They're metal. They screw together it, but it, it also makes a smaller cup of coffee mm-hmm. like because it's in a, it's basically an espresso of, pot. Is what it is. No, and you the, put it on the stove. Now uh, there, there's a, a, way that coffee is made it's made with cheap coffee and sugar i'm trying to remember it's it's a it's a latin country i don't cuban remember coffee? Cuba, is it cuban yes cuban that is, yeah they put there's something they just put very coffee. delicious yeah, stuff. yeah and it's, it's, it's a lot of sugar but there's cheap. a lot of and evapo- is it evaporated <laughs> milk it's either evaporated milk or condensed milk I'm they make it's called it's called coffee con leche tried making i wasn't I, gonna bother yeah, even trying Cubano. making that i, I feel like it. that's something that is worth uh if you guys want to try a different coffee drink that is something that's definitely worth yeah. trying mm-hmm. i don't know if that's a little quote cup. unquote amateur um coffee mm-hmm. drinking because i it, it is sweet but it is it is really delicious yeah. mm-hmm. it's it's comes in a little cup man those are 
Yeah, I live in Florida, so it's big know, for you. We're ninety yeah. miles away, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, get, we get a lot of a lot of shops. You can get a Cuban Cuban coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that is, that is that's crazy. another. It'll get thing you going too. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. another thing that's really interesting is every culture that has coffee has a different way of preparing it. Irish has bacon. Because, yeah, and I mean, they, <laughs> they, Italian, Italian we, espresso we either drink it, we, yeah, we drink yeah. espresso mainly. We don't drink big cups of coffee, we drink espresso. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, if you put milk in it, you can put milk in it, but most Italians won't drink it that way. But you, I mean, and so, it's very interesting because each culture that has yeah. coffee drinks it slightly differently. There's oh. cowboy coffee that that'll wake that'll yeah. wake the dead. That's whew, yep. you have to chew that coffee. Literally, because mm-hmm. a lot of times they just pour grounds into a pot of water. You know, basically just, you boil it mm-hmm. and just kind of mm-hmm. carefully pour it into a cup. And slow, and the longer <laughs> it sits, the better it is. I, ca- I camp with some mm-hmm. guys who they they make it like that. It's, mm-hmm. but it it is. Yeah. I mean, my family's full of you know cowboys and all that so they drink it like that i'm like i can't do this guys i want to die after drinking this everyone's got the rotted out teeth from it it's been well you, you tend to not worry about ratio and all yeah. that you're just straight coffee you're waking and up. boiling water and mm-hmm. yeah you know but the, the, it and is then you have, art form. Yeah, yeah i mean and then you have places like france and italy where coffee and how you prepare it is extremely important yeah it's almost ritualistic in the way that they do it so absolutely i say i I love the ritual when i'm doing it i don't care so much if i'm at a coffee shop and i'm there for a while i'm cool with it i like it but otherwise i Mm -hmm. I don't care about the ritual i I don't if it makes it taste better makes it taste better but i don't per se care about the ritual unless i'm like experiencing fair it, that makes sense that's the thing too yeah you know, a lot of we, i'm a coffee snob she's a tea snob you know it's just Mm-hmm. It's our thing. It's what we geek out yeah. over, you know. I, I I worked in construction, and at the beginning of that, you know, I was like, man, you know, I'm getting up at five thirty in the morning. This, I started drinking coffee from like seven eleven and stuff, and then you know, later on, I was introduced to a uh, you know fresh ground, fresh roasted coffee at one point, and it was just like I drank it. I was like, Whoa, what is this? This is so good. And they're like, well, it's just coffee. And I'm like, no, that's not just coffee. But yeah. there's a big difference in you know. The quality of it mm-hmm. and from then on i was like what makes this so good i just deep mm-hmm. dove into it and here i am yeah. you know, well so you know, my, I, my yeah. thing some people don't the, give it crap i've made the joke <laughs> several times about the irish coffee but that is delicious it is absolutely that are, and i mean even if you go on the mm-hmm. other side um with the caffeinated beverage you know the vodka and red bull thing there's a reason why that is so Ugh. i don't recommend don't I, I, I alcohol it. and energy <laughs> drinks is not a good combination. I'm telling you, don't do it. You're not yeah. supposed to. It says on the can, don't do it. But um, I may have had it fall into a cup together. Yeah, times. every once in a while, you know. I said, oh no, not oh, again. Oh shucks, you know. <laughs> but so I want real quick, everyone, name one more drink that you want our listeners to try that you think that that they probably don't know about. Um, yeah, I think that tea. Red Bull, whatever. Give me one. Give me one that you think that you want people to try. Let's start with Tyler on that one. Um. Uh, if I'm gonna recommend one, it's gonna be coffee. Uh, and I know it's probably commonplace, but get a well-made, rightfully crafted macchiato, and tell me what you think. Uh, it could, it's going to be in a smaller cup. It's not going to be this thing you get from Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. It's going to be in a smaller cup. There's a certain ratio of milk to espresso that they use. When it's made right, delicious. Absolutely delicious. And not not a caramel macchiato. It's coffee, milk. That's it. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Courtney. Um, I, I'm just... If you can get yourself a a beautifully high quality prepared cup of Earl Grey tea. S- put a little orange slice in there. Don't put any sugar. Don't put any milk. Put an orange slice in there. Then you're you're yeah. set. You're set. And I mean, I, I sometimes I drink mine with milk and sugar, but put a little honey. Put a little orange slice in there, and that's the the 
proper British way of doing it. Now, that's something that I did not think that I would like, but I started putting a little milk in my my English breakfast tea. It's really mm-hmm. delicious. That's really good, too. I hear too. that's yeah, really just, good. I haven't tried that. Just a little bit of milk. You can do. There's two traditional ways of preparing a good, strong Earl Grey. Wow, she was British, so snobbed. Or that, that's amazing. <laughs> or or British. The, the American way is we put um, milk and honey. Mm-hmm. So like, how does I don't know why. Do it? He does it with, well, he drinks it just straight, which you can't. Um, it tends to be slightly maddening. bitter. Yeah, it's bitter, but it's very good. I drink it. I'll drink plain Earl Grey too. It depends on what your mood is. Americans, we tend to put milk and honey in our tea. Um, when preparing a British, if you, the British people tend to put a slice in their, not necessarily the English breakfast, but on the Earl Grey specifically, a slice of orange and a scotch of sugar. But most of the time, you just need to put that slice of orange in there and that's all you need. Mm. Uh, well, but I get a, a good quid. Bit- don't, don't get like, don't get like the stuff you buy at the grocery store. I got a variation on that actually, and I like actually a little bit of um, either orange juice or lemonade, and with with their Earl Grey, and it's actually really delicious. It brings out a lot of those if natural you, flavors. Get awfully close same, to Arnold Palmer, sir. Kinda, yeah, put in the, but it's still hot, so it's the, not. But you drink good tea. Putting a little bit of the not, orange juice in there is, this, is 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 almost the equivalent of putting in a slice of orange. So yeah. it's roughly the same thing. There's just a little bit more sugar in a, in an orange juice than an actual orange. So I am mad a, at it. I got a question for you guys. Fire away. How are we on where was the consensus here? This large panel I have the survey from right here. <laughs> um, iced tea and iced coffee. I drink them both. I, I like, Iced coffee, if it's like I, a milkshake, <laughs> right? I feel like iced coffee is just destroying everything that it was meant to be. You know, like I said, I, if I go to like the Starbucks or something, it's gonna be, you know, if it's iced, it's gonna have all this. It's not gonna look like coffee. It's gonna look like milk. You know. Well, the iced coffee that just, I drink, I, oh, I, like, I will say, if I drink iced coffee, there's usually a sugar free flavor syrup in there. And there's yeah. a little bit of either heavy cream or half and half, or I don't use protein shake as a creamer. So yeah, I could, I yeah. I mean, I got. Cold I don't drink one straight ice coffee. And it was just like a whole cup of ice with it. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. You well, you, then you're just watering it down. Yeah. Now and I then like iced tea. If I have yeah. iced tea, it has to be sun tea. It has to be slowly yeah. seeped. Ooh, yeah. That's the yeah. only way to drink iced tea. Yes, yeah, my mom used yeah. to make that. Yep. You know. Or and real- unfortunately, I will make our good friend Kevin angry. I don't like sweet tea. <gasps> Neither do I. I do. Like, I'm, a, I I'm like, a southern boy I like, too. I like I, my hot tea with a little sweet every reunion. now and then, but I do not like sweet tea. But I love sun tea. I agree with you. Sun tea is the best. I don't know what it's makes the it different, superior but it is. iced tea. That's the ritual. You have to work for it, and it takes hours. Uh-huh. I, there's something that's you put great. The big about jug it. outside, except if you live in Las Vegas and it's 105, and then it takes us like 10 minutes to get set. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That was a show. We are going to be doing a lot more of these conversational podcasts. I've missed these a lot. I absolutely. I hope that y'all enjoy this kind of what we do on this because this is just a lot of fun for us. Uh, check out the website www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use Tom We Paid Extra for it. Go to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our smoke signals, our whatever. Um, talk to us. We do talk back. We love y'all. We do. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, check out, I think after this or right before it, the finale of Miss Marvel will be put Episode out. Episode five and six. I don't know which ones are, yeah. I don't know which, if this is going out first or second. I haven't decided yet. So, yeah, until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Courtney. We're here with Tyler. Keep on geeking on, kids. We'll see you next time. Go drink some coffee. A good coffee. Not from that place. You have been listening to the latest episode of the I Heart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.